Greetings, greetings, greetings to you all. Hallelujah and welcome to the Be That Man Men's School of Ministry, Men's Devotional, just for you. Praise God. Yes, it's me, Pastor Colin, and I'm back with you again. We are on week 19, and today we're going to be talking about God's purpose for the mailman. Amen. God's purpose for the mailman. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, we know that everything in life has a purpose. Everyone on this planet was born with and for a purpose. Therefore, it is this purpose that is the only source of meaning. Without purpose, life is an experiment or a haphazard journey that results in frustrations, it results in disappointments and failure. Without purpose, life is subjective, or it is a trial and error game that is ruled by an environmental influence and the circumstances of the moment. And likewise, in the absence of purpose, time has no meaning, energy has no reason, and life has no precision. So discovering purpose, my beloved brothers, Discovering purpose in life will enable us to experience an effective and full uh, rewarding life. Praise the Lord. Amen to that. Since the beginning, our God created man to be accountable uh, for him or to him. For example, when we look at the creation of Adam, God created Adam. He created a garden specifically for Adam. And what did he do? He placed Adam in that garden. So he gave Adam a job. He gave Adam a purpose. He gave Adam a destiny to fulfill. And he also gave him instructions to live by. Bless the name of the Lord. So when we look at purpose, it means the original intent for the creation of a thing. It refers to the original reason for the existence of a thing, the end for which the means exist, the cause for the creation of a thing, the desired result that initiates production, the destination that prompts the journey, the expectation of the source. So we, my beloved brothers, are all products of God's divine act. Hallelujah. And God creates us that we could manage his affairs on the earth. Praise the name of the Lord. For verse 19 and verse 21 reminds us from the Amplified Classic, many plans are in man's mind, but it is the Lord's purpose for him that will stand. So remember, my beloved brothers, that the purpose of something determines, determines its nature, determines its design, and determines its features. This means that the nature and the design and the qualities of man were decided upon by God and created by him according to what he determined was best for the sake of of his purposes. Praise the name of the Lord. So let us consider then the elements of the man's purpose. Well, we know he's given authority. We know that he is given a function. And we know that he is given a role. And we know that there is an order to how to do things according to God's word. This is what I call the Afro system. Authority, function, role, and order. Praise the name of the Lord. God did not make us for no reason at all. We are here to manage his affairs. Praise the Lord. Come on, somebody. Man was put on the earth to serve the needs of mankind and to enable mankind to fulfill their purpose. Praise God. So the man was designed by God. To be the foundation of the human family by God so we have responsibilities 
So in order for us to live out those responsibilities, we have to align ourselves with the product maker, which is God. Because we are all products of God's divine act. Praise the Lord. You know and I know that the priority in a building is always starting with the foundation. The foundation has to have the first priority. Come on. Because everything else will be built upon it. Praise God. So this society and society as a whole is only as strong as its men. Come on somebody. If men do not learn what it means to be a strong foundation in God, then society is sunk. So when God made the first male man, he was not saying that the man is more important than the female. He was saying that the man had a specific responsibility. He was the first to have a relationship with God to experience God's instructions. So we know that God doesn't do things haphazardly, amen. He has an order. So he gives man authority. He tells him how he needs to function. He gives him a role and he gives him the order of how to manage his affairs upon the earth. My Lord, help us to grab a hold of this uh, today. I am praying that God will raise up some strong foundational men right now. Men who will stand by their wives and stand with their children and also those in their sphere of influence and be their strength. It does not matter what your father was. You can be a strong foundation by becoming the man that God has created you to be. A central reason that God placed a man in the garden was so that he could be in his presence all the time. He could walk and talk with the Lord in the cool of the day. He could hear God's voice. This was a place where communion, fellowship and oneness with God was always intact. So the man is not wired to function outside of the presence of God, my beloved brothers. Amen. We need to function, hallelujah, in his presence. We need to draw from him, amen, so that we can build his kingdom here upon the earth. Adam could fulfill this purpose only if he was in constant communion with God in the garden. Amen. If man is not living in the presence of God, he might be moving, but he is not really functioning. So outside of the presence of God, he is dangerous, uncontrolled. He becomes a beast. The Apostle Paul tells us that a man without God is a creature without conscience. Romans 1 verses 28 to 32 from the Amplified Classic says this, And so, since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, or approve of him, or even consider him worth the knowing, God gave them over to a base and condemned mind to do the things not proper or decent, but loathsome, until they were filled, permeated and saturated with every kind of unrighteousness, iniquity, grasping and covetous greed and malice. They were full of envy and jealousy, murder, strife, deceit and treachery, ill will and cruel ways. They were secret backbiters and gossipers, slanderers, hateful to and hating God, full of insolence, arrogance and boasting inventors of new inventors of new forms of evil, disobedient and undutiful to parents. They were without understanding, consciousness and faithfulness, heartless and loveless and merciless. Though they are fully aware of God's righteous decree that those who do such things deserve to die. They not only do them themselves, but approve and applaud others who practice them. It is only by continually being in God's presence that our minds and our hearts can be renewed. We need to learn to walk in step with the Spirit so that we can fulfill 
what God has called us to do, that we can fulfill God's purpose for our lives. Amen. Galatians 5 and verse 25 says this. It says this. If we live by the Holy Spirit, let us walk by the Spirit. If by the Holy Spirit we have our life in God, let us go forward walking in line our conduct controlled by the Spirit. Amen. And then look at verse 16 where it says, But I say, walk and live habitually in the Holy Spirit, responsive to and controlled and guided by the Spirit. Then you will certainly not gratify the cravings and desires of the flesh of human nature without God. That is Galatians 5 and verse 16. So we should never doubt our need of God, my beloved brothers. Remember the first thing that he gave to the man was his presence. God wants us to be in his presence. He created us to fulfill his purpose on the earth, but we need to be in his presence and we need to let the Holy Spirit be the prime mover of inspiration mm -hmm. so that we can do the Lord's business. Amen to that. Amen to that. Genesis 2.15, And the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to tend and to keep it. So God placed man in his presence. It is important for us in order to fulfill what God has called us to, to be in the presence of God, to let the Holy Spirit be the prime mover of inspiration in all that we do. Amen. And so, Heavenly Father, I pray that we as men will fulfill your purpose. That, Lord, we will be led and directed and inspired by the Holy Spirit. Lord, that we will walk and live habitually in the Holy Spirit. We will be responsive to and controlled and guided by the Holy Spirit. Then we will certainly not gratify the cravings and desires of the flesh. But we will do what is pleasing in your sight, Almighty Father, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Well, I pray that the Lord will bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you and keep you in perfect peace. So until next time, stay blessed, stay focused, and most importantly, stay safe. Bye for now. This is the Be That Man, Men's School of Ministry, Men's Devotional. Amen. Take care. God bless. Greetings, greetings, greetings to you all and welcome. My name is Pastor Colin and I'm from the organization the Be That Man Men's School of Ministry and we have a couple of books that we would like to let you know that we have for men. Amen. If you have men in your organization you want to start their development and to enable them to start moving forward uh, as men uh, of God then I recommend Be That Man. Amen. Now, this book, amen, is very instructive, amen, and if you've got new men coming into your ministry, or even those that have been there for a long period of time, do share that they can purchase this book on Amazon, amen. Also, we have It's a Man Thing. Now, this is a biblical directive, amen, with uh, certain definitions for the word man and men when used throughout the scriptures. It's a good pocket book. You can just put it in your jacket pocket, walk with it and read it and it will cause you to study even further now these books can be obtained on amazon or you can go to our website btmlifelight.co.uk the details are below be that man amen yes it's live be that man and it's a man thing hallelujah have you got your copies yet Praise God. I recommend them to you highly. Go to Amazon or go to our website, btmlifelight.co.uk. Purchase them now and encourage your man or the men in your lives. Amen. Bye for now. God bless you.